This is Reverend Rice, and I want to welcome you to That's What's Up With Women. And when we think about what's up with women, we all have to agree that there's a lot up. And we just wanted to have some conversation and re some reflection in this season when uh, certainly many of us are looking forward to this Advent season and the celebration of the coming of Jesus Christ, the greatest gift that God could give to the world. And while we're doing that, we have to pause and consider that there are others that are not in a celebratory mood. There are others who are perhaps dealing with depression, um, dealing with a lot of stress. And so we decided to sit down and have a conversation with Dr. Phyllis Mayo. Dr. Phyllis Mayo is the director of Pastoral Care and Counseling Center in Washington, D.C. And while many of us are celebrating and certainly looking forward to Christmas Day and time with family and friends and time to pause and share with one another how much uh, we love each other and certainly to celebrate the greatest gift that God has given to the world and that is of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, there are some who are not in a celebratory mood. There are some who are stressed out. There are, are some who are dealing with a grief in this season and even depression. And so I just wanted to sit down and have a conversation with Dr. Phyllis Mayo of the Pastoral Care and Counseling Center in Washington, D.C. and Just get some um, information from her to, to glean from her expertise on how best to deal with this season that for some can be um, stressful and even a depressing time of the year. So if you would, just take a look at our conversation. Welcome, Dr. Mayo. It's good to have you with us again. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, you know, I wanted us to just take a moment and talk. I always enjoy our conversations, and I always appreciate the insights that you have to offer. I just wanted us to take a moment uh, to talk about an issue that is often averted in our community, in Christendom, and even in the African-American community, and that is depression and um, mental health issues. And certainly as we're um, in this Advent season, a season of hope and um, a season where we anticipate the wonderful celebration of the gift that God gave to the world, and that is the gift of salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we're really excited. Um, there are some individuals that don't share that excitement in this season for a myriad of reasons, and so I wanted to glean from um, your insights and would hope that you would share some of the issues and some of the concerns and some of the things that people are dealing with that maybe don't have them at a place of hope and joy in this season that we call for and certainly are not in a place of peace. Well, that's a lot. That's a big order. <laughs> that's tall. <laughs> but certainly I, I would like to, you know, suggest that depression is something that's mm. pretty common among African Americans, but also among women. Wow. And unfortunately, they may experience it throughout the year mm -hmm. based on different things that are going on in their lives. But it becomes more difficult to deal with during this holiday season. Okay. And I think the reason it becomes more difficult is because we have so many expectations of mm. what the holiday seasons are supposed to be about. Okay. We give lip service to being thankful around mm -hmm. Thanksgiving time. Mm -hmm. We give lip service to being joyful about the birth of our Savior around Christmas time. Okay. And those are the reasons for the, the holidays. Mm -hmm. But certainly sometimes we're not feeling thankful. We're mm -hmm. not feeling that we're joyous because we've got so caught up into the stresses of the holidays. Mm -hmm. We've also gotten caught up into the expectations that others have for us have for us. Okay. And unfortunately, when society expects us to do something, we think that that's true. Mm. As opposed to remembering Thanksgiving as a time where we should be continually thankful for all the Lord continues to do for us. Right, right. We think about, well, should I have a big dinner and should I invite all the family over? Right. Who should come? Who should come? Do I want to see Uncle Bobo again? And do, do I, I want to see, see Pookie and them? And do I want to do? And, and do I want to compete with Auntie mm. over who makes the best turkey? Right, right, or the or potato salad, the <laughs> mac and cheese. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> right. And so we get caught up into mm. that. And then when we get to Christmas, we know that it is the time that we celebrate our Savior's birth and wow. we celebrate all that he did for us mm -hmm. and that he continues to do but we get caught up into okay well I've got to buy a gift for right. my auntie I've got to buy a gift for my children 
you know, the electronics are expensive this right. year, but everybody wants the latest iPhone, right, right. everybody wants the new iPad. Mm. So we get caught up into trying to please everyone right. and forget the reasons. For and the I have holidays. to give a gift for Karen because Karen gave me a gift, gift last year, and I want to make sure. So there's certain expectations, expectations that we set for ourselves. Absolutely. And as you said, and that others impose on us as well. Um, one of the, of the issues I think that you raised that I think is very important that we oftentimes um, don't really address or give the full attention to is the dysfunction that rests in, in, in many families. So we have a level of um, dysfunction. I think everybody has it, if we're oh, honest, um, but to varying degrees. And mm -hmm. so oftentimes there's stress and, and frustration centered around just seeing another individual because there's some history absolutely. that has gone undealt with mm -hmm. or some problems or, or, or issues of the past mm -hmm. that have gone unaddressed that have people in a place of frustration. Oh, that's absolutely correct. And many times we don't talk about situations. Mm -hmm. What we decide to do is, okay, I'll avoid you. Right, right. And if I avoid you, then I don't have to address the situation. Wow. But then when the holiday comes up, mm -hmm. the expectation is that we don't avoid each other. We all come together. And then we, we act celebrate like we love each, each other. other. Right, we right, act right. like we love each other. And so whatever the trigger was that I tried to forget right, right. resurfaces. Right. As soon as I see you. As soon you, as I see as you. As soon as I'm forced to to deal with to you. Interact to with interact with you or as soon as you say what you said to me when I was 10 Ooh, that made me mad. Right. The buzzwords <laughs> and and the, the the trigger points if you will Absolutely. that elicit a certain certain response especially if it goes undealt with. I was watching uh, not too long ago an episode of um, Fix My Life mm -hmm. Ayana uh, Van Zandt and, and this particular uh, segment was focusing on this family of of of, of of all women who um, were in industry, in the music industry, and as they began to sit around the table and talk, it was at least two of the seven or eight, all of them had major health issues, major um, problems with mm -hmm. blood pressure mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, diabetes and so mm -hmm. many health issues, are overweight, extremely overweight. And as they began to talk and flush out their issues and concerns, at least two of them um, admitted for the first time that they had been abused by very close family members, uh, uh, uncle and uh, I believe a brother, mm -hmm. uh, and and they, you know, out came um, this outpour of emotions mm -hmm. that they had held in for years and had not shared uh, with one another. So if you go years with holding on to that kind of suffering and then you don't have a way or choose a way, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. to address it. Then, then comes the outburst because I, I, you know, some family gatherings, while they can be very warm and loving and caring, and we we do have a chance to pause and and share with and remind each other how much we love each other mm -hmm. and how much we care for for one another. That's generally, you know, my experience in my environment. But I know that others don't share that same experience, and so it's now I'm looking at you, and now I'm. Uh, you know, then the next thing you know, we're, like you said, we're arguing over something really small or we're mm -hmm. saying things that cause unnecessary or maybe they are necessary outbursts to mm -hmm. finally uh, get it out and deal with some issues. So um, what are some of the ways um, perhaps you can suggest that we can uh, process some of the things that we're going to be confronted with if we're going into situations, if I'm still angry with my brother for something that he did, or if I'm still um, disappointed at my mother for letting me down, or my father who perhaps um, didn't give me the attention that I needed or, you know, desired as a child, and the many other uh, mm -hmm. issues that people can um, can have an experience. What are some of the suggestions that you may have to, I know that's loaded too, but <laughs> <laughs> well, just give us a tidbit. Well, I, you know, one of the things that I think about when I think about any uh, situation where you need to take care of yourself mm. is to figure out what is comfortable for you. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can't always go along with everyone else's expectations. That's good. If you agree that you want to participate with your family. Mm. If you agree, and if that's you, good. If you that's agree. Key. Stay if home. You if you agree. need to stay home. If you, if you need, need to, to stay, stay home, stay home. Exactly. <laughs> 
or if you want to go, mm -hmm. limit the time that you're going to be there. And set your own parameters, set, set your, your own, own boundaries. boundaries. Okay, and that's you, good. And you decide, okay, if dinner is going to be at 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. then maybe you need to arrive at 5.30. All right. And then Let maybe you need to help a little bit at the end with cleaning right. up or either, and then you need to go. Right. You don't That's need good. to sit around all afternoon so that the opportunity to for all of these these uh, past issues mm -hmm. to resurface and right. for the, you all to engage in that kind of combat. Wow. You don't need to do that. That's good. You may decide that, for instance, Maybe I can't see you on the holiday. Mm, Maybe okay. I'll see you on the eve. Okay. Maybe I'll come That's by good. the night before, spend okay. some time Put with the important and, people, mm -hmm. and then decide, okay, well, this is the way that I'm comfortable doing mm. it. I think what we have to do is take care of ourselves. Wow. And I don't believe that taking care of ourselves is being selfish. Right, I right, believe right. that taking care of ourselves preserves us mm. and keeps us so that we're able to be used by God, but also so that we're helpful to ourselves right, and our family. Right, right. If you're sitting there pulling your hair out and constantly angry, right, right. what good are you? Right, to, to yourself to and, yourself or, or to else. others. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I think we forget about the most is that our bodies and our minds and our spirits are connected. Mm. So if we're holding on to something wow. that is a hurt from the past and mm. we're not dealing with it, right, right. It manifests. It's, it's manifesting some Somewhere. way, possibly right. internally, right. in you. I right. mean, if, you, if you're if you somebody who suffers from migraines, mm -hmm. if you're someone who suffers from, from pre pressure issues, mm -hmm. from, you know, there's a lot of research now that talks about stress being the number one wow. mental illness, mm. but that it is correlated with your cardiac problems, okay. with your other physiological problems. My. So if we're holding on to stuff, we're doing damage to right. ourselves physically. Right. Right. We're also not making ourselves available to be used by God because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we're so caught up and we're so angry and we're right. just so stressed. So, it, so we're not available to anyone. I think one of the other issues that I think some might say and many feel is that they want to find a way to mm -hmm. to express what it is that they're dealing but I think oftentimes the struggle comes in at in how do I um, engage in healthy conversation if I'm harboring, you know, if I'm dealing mm -hmm. with an issue. I'm always prayerful and asking God, because I'm a firm believer in confronting where it counts, because mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. doesn't always count. Right. I mean, some things don't even deserve, you know, the attention. Right. But but there are people and situations that deserve that, that level of attention. And then the question then becomes, how do I... Well, first of all, evaluate what you're thinking and feeling to make sure that it has the, the right merit. As you're being good to yourself, I think that being true to yourself means really making that assessment. So looking in the mirror and saying, okay, what's going on? What am I, what am I feeling now? And what's, what's causing, mm -hmm. you know, this feeling? What's causing this emotion? What's generating this emotion? I kind of walk myself through, through that process to make sure, you know, that I keep it where it should be mm -hmm. because oftentimes it can be misplaced uh, you know i'm taking this out over here when it's really misappropriated Absolutely. and it should be over here mm -hmm. so you know you walk yourself through the part okay is this valid and validate yourself and i think that's mm -hmm. good but then once you do that okay i have an issue with so and so i'm i'm having an issue with this so once you establish that it is something that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. then then you know maybe we can help somebody by sharing how best then to address that rather than to internalize it because most of the issues are are related to internalizing well mm -hmm. many of them Absolutely. i'd say many of them mm -hmm. like i had a uh, an encounter with my own brother i love my brother to death you know we were sitting around the thanksgiving table probably about my dad was still here so it was over 10 years ago or so then but we're sitting at the table and all of a sudden you know we're having what i thought was a good time and he said it in jest but he was like you know they gave you 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 got the car you got the first car and i'm like okay <laughs> that was 25 years ago and first of all i didn't get the first car but even if i did this is something that happened 25 years ago that you somehow or another held on to so you know how do you <laughs> how do you confront things or and that's you know certainly uh, what I, a tr in my mind you know maybe a trite example but for him obviously if he's still addressing this many 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 years later it was impactful uh, it impacted him 
So tell me, what is the healthy way to deal uh, with, with confrontation? Because the Bible speaks um, really very clearly about confrontation and that it's good, but mm -hmm. there is a certain way that we should confront when we're dealing with issues. So if there are circumstances and situations that we've been harboring, what are some suggestions you have um, to actually deal with that and to get things out in the open and to clear the air, so to speak? Well, I think that there are several ways we can approach it. One of the first ways, I think, is for us to be really honest with ourselves mm -hmm. and figure out what the emotions are coming from. Mm -hmm. Have we misinterpreted what someone said to us? Mm -hmm. um, did we believe that they said something that they really did not say? Check it out first. Mm -hmm. And that may mean that we may have to have a peer, that we may have to have a sister that we can talk to and say, you know, so-and-so approached me like this and they said this to me and I'm feeling very angry. And then that objective person can help right. you to see that perhaps maybe you misinterpreted what they said, right. that you misheard what they said. Mm. And so then there's no need for you to go and pounce on someone That's good. That's because good. you didn't hear it correctly. Right. Someone because you trust. Exactly, mm. someone that you trust and Who's who can be, be honest. honest with you. Yeah. Because sometimes we, someone may look at us and we'll say, well, why are they looking at me like that? Well, right. they may not have even seen you. Right. They just right. may have looked in your direction, right. had something else on their mind, you interpreted their look as something else. Right, so right. what we do is if we have an objective friend who is honest, mm -hmm. but also someone who can be a, kind of a, a, a sounding board right, for you. Right. So that you insightful. can... Someone who's insightful. Insightful mm -hmm. and also who can say, well, you know what? You know, mm -hmm. Reverend Rice, that, that mm -hmm. really isn't the way I hear it. Yeah, I you mean, might have been it, off it, on that. You might have been yeah. off that day. She yeah. really wasn't thinking about you. You know, yeah. so-and-so just lost her dog or right, something. Right, so right. she was not thinking about you. Right. And that helps us. Right. And then once we figure out that what we have perceived is correct, mm -hmm. then we need to go to that person in a respectful way. Not to beat them up, right. not to jump them, right. but to say to them, to share. I have a concern, can right. we talk about it? Right. And I think when we say I have a concern, can we talk about it, you're mm -hmm. not attacking. Right. It diffuses it, the it situation. It diffuses it and you're not attacking yeah. because when you attack someone, for the most part, mm. they're going to get defensive. very defensive and there right. may be a, another attack back. Right, right, so right. that way it allows you to have a conversation, mm -hmm. understand what both of you meant by what, mm -hmm. what transpired, mm -hmm. and then hopefully move on from that so that there's nothing between the two of right. you anymore. Right. And also you can learn from that situation mm. so that you don't apply it to every situation that comes up in your right. life. So we have to be honest about it, wow. but it, it means taking time to look eternally right. and see what are we doing and, and how are we perceiving things. Doing some self-reflection. Self-reflection, right. absolutely. So in the, the time that's left, um, Dr. Mayo, I, I would like for you to just share as we want to talk a little bit about this whole issue of, of depression uh, and what people may be. I know many people in this season... Uh, are dealing with grief, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because this is a family time and because this is time set aside to to commune and to fellowship and so forth. If there are those who have lost loved ones and managing, you know, mm -hmm. the season, you know, the special time, especially if you're close family and connected and there is a void, mm -hmm. you know, because that, I know, you know, when we lost my dad, you know, trying to navigate around um, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving, certainly every day, ne negotiating every day was a challenge, but the special days became an even greater challenge because it was just, just major, major void. So you have people who are dealing with grief. You have people in this season where people um, are still feeling the aftermath of the furlough. So they're dealing with financial um, um, burdens that mm -hmm. um, perhaps may have them. You have all these enticements, uh, um, you know, in the media and so forth. And as we talked about mm -hmm. earlier, the, the enticements to shop and to, right. to perhaps overspend and all of that. And that can be depressing if you don't have it. You may even have a desire to give mm -hmm. and, and really not be able to do that. And that can hurt. And certainly there are so many practical ways. We, we certainly have a lot of opportunities here at Mount Eden to, to be of, of service. So you can mm -hmm. serve by offering your hands, um, serve by... Um, aiding in, in the community mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But what are some of the um, um, suggestions or recommendations that you might have for someone who's really at a place of grief um, or depression in this season and how, you know, to help them get through? Well, this is a difficult time because, mm -hmm. as we said earlier, there are many expectations yeah. for family to to be happy, mm -hmm. to, be, to engage in 
different parties and things like that. And right. sometimes you just don't feel like it. Right. And that's okay. I mean, I think that sometimes we have to give ourselves permission mm. to not do what everybody expects of us. So mm. you may want to miss an event. If you're going to go to an event and you're going to be unhappy, then right. it may, you may not need to go to that event. Bow out. That's right. Mm. There's, there's nothing wrong with not participating every time there's something that happens. Right. There's an activity. But the other thing I think that's very important for us is not to focus so much on the loss mm -hmm. as a most as much as to focus on what we do have right, right, right. there was a person who is gone and so there are pleasant memories mm. there are pleasant traditions yes. there are things that you used to do with that person redo those things yes. that person will not be there but doing it before with that person was a source of joy right. so bring that joy back by and it's by, a legacy it's by, a tribute it, ab absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. I think that we get so caught up on remembering the actual loss wow. as opposed to remembering the joy that that person brought to our life, mm. bring the joy that that situation brought to right. our life. Right. And when we think about giving, and if we're in a situation as a result of the furlough or without of a job, we need to think about ways that we can give that are meaningful, that mm. are not expensive. Right, right, right. I right. think too often we get caught up into we've got to go to this store and we've got to get this, this mm -hmm. for this person and they like this so let me get them that. Why not go through, for me, I mean, go through a cookbook and find some wonderful recipes and mm -hmm. get some cute boxes, right, right, which right. are very inexpensive, and bake goods right, right, for someone. Right, right. It's something that shows that you took the time, that you cared enough for mm -hmm. them to spend your time making this for them, or it's, it meant that, you know, you cared about what they wanted, mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to just saying, okay, I've got to get a gift and it's got to be from Saks. Right, right, I mean, right. sometimes we yeah, get you know, caught right. up into that. And we can't afford it. Right. And then we're angry later. Mm. So I think that if we really, really take advantage of the the saying that says, remember the reason for the season, right. and not in a very shallow way, right. but in a right. very serious way, which means that Christ died for us. Mm. And so he gave the ultimate gift. Right. So if we can give anything to someone else that's of ourselves. Right then right. that would take away the depression that we're feeling. Mm. It can take away the thoughts of self-pity. Right, right. No, you're right. You know, if yeah. you don't think about yourself, think about right. other people. Right. How can I, how can, and sometimes with people, it may be spending time. You know, it's not always about right. money. It might be going and sitting um, with someone who you don't have an opportunity to, to be with mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, too often. Um, I do think that it is so important for us to, to remember because right. that's one of the things that we really don't do. Sometimes we dwell in the moment. And I was watching um, the other day a segment, I believe it was Joel Osteen and his segment that they was remembering the good. Mm -hmm. And that was really the essence of the entire message is that, he, and he said something that I thought was interesting and that was our, our tendency, um, how we're programmed mm -hmm. to really zoom in on the things that aren't working and the things that the aren't loss. going right. And so how intentional mm -hmm we then have to be mm -hmm. about um, the blessings. And Pastor Coates um, preached a sermon um, last week and in the season of Advent, tremendous sermons um, of encouragement mm -hmm. and of hope. And he brought back to my um, remembrance a hymn that we used to sing in the church all the time, and that's count your blessings. That's Name right. them one, one by, by one. one, right? Mm -hmm. You would be surprised at what the, the Lord, Lord has, has done. done. Absolutely. So when we pause and really think about my, you know, you know every day, um, when you see a day, when that's you right. see a new that's day, a blessing. Oh, that's, a blessing. that's a blessing. When you put your feet on the floor, and, and everybody can't necessarily put your feet on the floor literally, but to be able to even breathe the breath of life, that's right. um, you know, to mm -hmm. experience a day that we didn't, we really don't deserve. Mm -hmm. We absolutely don't deserve. And so to just pause and and think about mm -hmm. all the wonderful things that God, I have um, a practice in my life and, and, and I encourage others to do the same. I always think about um, Jeremiah's admonishment and lamentation mm -hmm. in Lamentation 3 when he says, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Great is his faithfulness and his mercies are new every day. So for me, whenever I get the tendency to maybe think about, you know, where, you know, what things aren't going right, 
I have to pause and say, what is the tender mercy That's right. that I'm experiencing Absolutely. in this Absolutely. day? And, and, and inevitably, something immediately comes to mind and it redirects mm -hmm. my thought and mm -hmm. my process. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Mayor, I just wish we could talk uh, longer. Mm -hmm. I know you have an obligation, so we're going to um, um, plan to, to come together again and okay. have further dialogue It'll because be you've pleasure. been extremely helpful. And if you would, um, just take a moment in our final um, closing thoughts, if you want to just um, address the, uh, the, the, the ladies and those who are viewing and just give them one uh, final thought or, or glimpse of hope um, in this season. Well, I guess I'd like to say to the ladies that, you know, this is a season of a lot of celebration, a lot of joy, a lot of family gatherings, and that you have to decide how you can take care of yourself in this season, but also be a, a blessing to others. And that means that you have to not stretch yourself to do something that you don't want to do, but only do the things that you think would be helpful to others, that would be pleasing to others, and that would allow you to be a gift to them. Thank you, thank you. And what I would say in my final thoughts to, to the ladies is that it is so important for us in the midst of um, looking at the circumference of our situations to ever be mindful to celebrate ourselves. I'm, I'm always grateful for the counsel in scripture in Psalm 139 that says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous are the works of God and that our soul should know right well. So just remember how, how God looks upon us no matter how much we're struggling, no matter how much. And while it's good to do self-examination as we're preparing to usher in a new year, we should reflect on what happened last year. We should certainly be considering how to make the following year a better year than that which we've experienced before. But with that, always remembering the good, remembering all of the wonderful things that God has done, and then moving forward with expectation and excitement about what God intends to do. Always uh, the best way to receive a blessing is to be a blessing. So I know we get encouragement by being a blessing to someone else. And so in this season, let us seek to be a blessing to somebody. And so perhaps there's somebody who's watching that's struggling in this season. Just want to encourage you to remember that Jesus died, that we might have life. And his promise is not that we just merely, merely survive, but he declares that he desires that we have life and have life more abundantly. We yes. thank God for the gift of Christ. Amen and God bless you. Amen.